Hey y'all, welcome back to Area of All Trades. Working on a Bobcat zero turn, no start condition. This applies to a whole lot of the riding tractors and zero turns, this type of no start condition. Let me show you what's going on. So the parking brake is set. The arms are in the park position. If you listen closely, turn the key on. You can hear a solenoid clicking, but there's no starter engaging. So this is a real easy one to diagnose. A lot of people just start throwing parts at it. This is a real easy one to diagnose. Get a voltmeter out, set it on DC volts, put your ground, get it connected on the battery, and make sure that your battery reads at least 12.6 uh, volts. You know, 12 something anyway. Large battery lead leaves this battery, goes straight down to the solenoid. Let's see if I can touch it down here. So the meter's reading 12.7 volts, battery voltage basically. When I go to the other side of the solenoid, I'm just going to set the meter lead on there and get my hands out of the way. You can see I've got no volts at all, right? Now if I turn the key, and watch yourself because sometimes these will activate anyway. When I turn the key, you can see I've got battery voltage coming across it, losing just a little bit, but I've got battery voltage coming across it, which means that the solenoid itself is actually working. There's possibility that there's corrosion on the lead coming off of the solenoid going to the starter. So that's what we're gonna check next. Take the cover off of the starter. Be gentle with these, okay? Now I'm going to take and put the positive lead onto the starter connector. So let's turn the key. I've got almost battery voltage going to the starter. So I know that the solenoid is working. It's passing power all the way over to the wire that's attached to the starter. So now I know that the solenoid is okay. The way solenoids work, I'll just show you real quick. So you have, some of them have two leads like this coming off of them. Some of them only have one. If it only has one, then it's pulling ground from this body right here that's attached to the frame. If it has two, then this ground over here doesn't matter. And one of these leads will be ground and the other one will be positive. So tell you what, let's go ahead and hook up one side of the meter. Let's turn the key and see if we have 12 volts coming to it. So we've got 12 volts roughly coming to the um, solenoid to make it engage. All right, which means that the other side has to be ground. I can hear it ticking, so I know it's working. But anyway, um, so the other one we want to check is ground. So if I put the, the positive side of the meter on there, and I move my other side of my meter over to positive. So I have one side of the meter on positive. The other side of the meter is on the wire that I suspected was ground. I have 12 volts, which means that I have good ground potential. It means that wire there is connected to the uh, battery ground over here. I know my signal wires and everything else are good. I know I have a bad starter. Let's show you effectively how I know that it was bad. Okay, I have on the bench here three different starters. I'm gonna take and plug the hot lead onto this terminal, either this terminal or that terminal. This happens to be a solenoid, an external solenoid. So this is a solenoid and a starter. This is just a starter, just a starter. So these are effectively what we have over there. So the way a starter works, it only requires a positive and a ground. The positive comes in on this lead right here. The ground comes in on the uh, where the body of the starter bolts to the frame of the motor. If I attach this to ground and then touch this to positive, it should fire the starter. Um, I don't want to do that because when you do that, you make arc marks here on this bolt. So just for testing purposes, I'm going to attach this here. Keep in mind, don't let the red touch the metal of the, the body of it because you'll have a bunch of sparks. If I touch negative of this jump pack to here, I fully expect this starter 
to jump out and spin. Okay, that's the way a starter works. That's what the solenoid is doing. The solenoid is breaking the positive connection over to the battery. It's a, it's a relay. But anyway, that's what the solenoid is doing. So if you have power coming through the solenoid over to here, that starter should be going. And when you let off the key, it turns the solenoid off, and it's what stops this starter from spinning. So let's test it on a different starter. Trying to make sure that I'm not touching this red to body and to here at the same time. Okay. Every time I touch it, I'm making little arc marks. That's why I'm doing it from the ground side. Here we go. Let's try one more. This one has a solenoid on it. For this type of starter, this is a solenoid. So you notice this has a hardwired connection over to the starter. You have a trigger here. So what would it be is the battery would be hooked up to this one at all times. Like that. And then if you touch the red, um, this is your signal from your starter, from your key. If you touch that with a good ground, this will fire. And I'll show you. So right now, you see how the starter's not spinning? So, because my, bat my battery's on this one all the time right now. My ground's on this one right now. If I make a jumper from this little spade lug right there, and I touch the red, it's going to make the starter go. Which is what a what is what a solenoid's doing. Y'all see that? Anyway, it's a super simple circuit on how they operate, how they function. I just wanted to show you guys how you can use those simple troubleshooting methods to determine what's actually bad. So let me get this starter off of this thing. Just in case some of y'all wanted to see how the starter comes out on the Kawasaki 19 horsepower, at least this model. The starter had two bolts. You can see right there and there, and uh, it just slides right up. And then you can see the bolt holes right there and over there. So anyway, you can reach those. I uh, The one on the left for me was a 13 millimeter. The one on the right was a 12 millimeter. So there's no reason to take apart the entire motor or anything like that. You can pull this starter out from the side. Let's give this thing a test. All right, we're going to test this one the exact same way we just tested the other ones. I'm going to hook up positive on here. We're going to touch ground. And since I've moved it around, done all kinds of stuff, it would be very similar to like hitting a starter, right? So it's very possible it might actually go this time. So, yeah, this one's completely dead. Usually what happens inside these things is usually the, the brushes get a flat spot. Let's take this one apart just to see what it looks like. So I'm expecting a couple of uh, 10 millimeter nylock nuts that hold these long bolts that come all the way through. And then we're gonna have to fight to pull the magnetic field out of this thing. Looks like eight millimeter on that side. Let's see, a good strong magnetic force and there is a lot of dirt in there. So this is where the brushes ride. And I can see that the brush holder is cracked right here. Oof. Yeah, lots of parts. Although I don't see anything that would have stopped it. I mean, unless something was in the way. Let me show you what this looks like normally. So the way you put these on. There is holes back here. You shove paper clips in there and in there, and you hold these, man, 
and you hold these uh, brushes back. I'm going to try to do this the uh, uh, a different way just because I don't have any paper clips. I can't find, I don't know where, I, where I, what I did with them. So it is entirely possible that if I threw a uh, new brush holder in this thing, that it would actually fix it. All right, so what you're doing whenever this works, this, like I said, this brush holder is just destroyed. Um, whatever it's doing is uh, you're applying a power to here, right? Which is applying power to this brush and the one on the opposite side. And then these two over here are connected mechanically to, or electrically to this uh, grounding plate over here. So you've got DC voltage coming to these two over here and then um, DC negative to the two opposite side brushes. And then that's what's applying power over here to that armature. So, and you can sometimes take these apart and clean them up. But like I said, what's occurring is I've got, uh, and I'll pull this back apart. All of these plastic pieces are supposed to be holding all this in place. And since it's crumbling, while the brushes are still okay and they're still connected and they're still electrically uh, there, the these pieces of plastic, I have a feeling, are getting in the way or they're stopping that motor from turning. But you can see all the debris. And then when this starter motor starts spinning, so it, it spins one direction, when it uh, starts spinning, it actually forces this gear up so there is a set of teeth in there, that worm gear. As it starts spinning, the centrifugal force kind of forces this up and allows it to spin. And then the spring pulls it back. Anyway, that's the way it works. So, and then uh, when it reaches its top side, it's supposed to engage. And it feels like that's not engaging properly anyway. Um, it's supposed to engage those teeth to allow them to come together. And then once it stops spinning, it just spring pulls it back. So anyway, we need a starter. We'll throw a starter in this thing. All right, threw the new starter in. Remember that the uh, ground wire goes on this side. And uh, this side over here was a 13 millimeter bolt. This side was a 12. I'm not sure if that's factory or not. Hook your battery back up and make sure that the parking brake's on and that the these are in the open position. And I'm gonna attempt not to start this thing, but let's see. Yep, we got it fixed. Hope you all got something out of the video. Really appreciate you hanging out. Super easy to check a uh, starter and solenoid. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.